Trans women should be legally treated as women. Three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome back to that Liminal Period. It's your girl, Chun Li Shadi. And with so many conversations continuing to happen around women and trans women within the female athletic space, I thought it'd be interesting to revisit this video from 2022. In this video, we're going to be discussing the claim that trans women should be legally treated as women. I think this conversation is in particularly interesting because there is a molecular geneticist on the panel. So it's really going to be eye-opening to hear what she has to say. Without further ado, let's get into it. Trans women should be legally treated as women. Three, two, one. This is obviously very complicated. Uh, three, two, one, go. Okay. So strongly, <laughs> you can. So you're certainly welcome to. You're certainly welcome to clap for everyone, sir. That's that's fantastic. I love that. I love that enthusiasm. And you're even welcome to clap even when nothing is happening. Okay. So you've got strongly disagree. You disagree, you agree. Okay, so let's, let's start with you. So uh, can you tell us what are the reasons for why you believe trans women should be legally treated as women? Why well, I disagree with that. Oh, we, we disagree. Dis why, why you disagree? So, so uh, well, as we've seen in situations where jails are involved, right? So men and women ought to be separated in jails, regardless of how someone identifies. Because why? Uh, we don't want to see people get raped, as we've seen actually happen, right? Inmates have raped other inmates when a man has said he ad identifies as a woman and ends up raping another inmate who's a woman. Okay. That's a problem. And not to mention unfair um, competition in sports. Can you get, is there a particular sport you're thinking about? Well, swimming is an obvious one recently. But uh, it really, any, any uh, sports competitions where... Uh, physical strength and size matters, which is many sports, if not most. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so we disagree that trans women ought to be treated the same as women, biological women, for those reasons. Okay, so why? why disagree? Well, yeah, but everything you said seems to me like you should be on strongly disagree. Well, so, but I, I don't strongly disagree insofar as like when it comes to interpersonal situations. If someone wants to be called by whatever pronouns they want. But legally, but legally, the question is legally. Ah, legally. Um, even legally, like, it's, it's no, yeah, that, so, okay, no, fair enough. Why should I not step over? <laughs> and you can, no, so no, that's no, the no, thing. No, Anybody, no, can, you can step no, in, no problem if you no, want to step. In fact, it's good. Let me qualify that. So, so if someone fully transitions and wants to, whatever, have their driver's license say they're a woman when they were biologically male, it doesn't bother me, you know, so. So the reason, the reason you, so that's a legal instance where, again, like to me, that's like not a, um, Oh, so that's why you're on the disagree yeah, yeah, Okay. Yeah, I can see cases where, okay, yeah. that's fair. So even though something like a driver's license might seem like it's my new, and it might not matter to you. I think about the instances of whenever someone is committing a crime, how do you report that? Do you report them based on the gender that they identify with? Or are we going to describe that suspect based on what their legal documents say as well as what they're presenting themselves as? I wonder about that not only within the trans community, but also within the individuals that identify as they and them. Can you imagine how hard it would be to read a police report and you're looking for them and really it's only one suspect? Do you understand how much more confusing things become when you just allow people to self-identify and then also let that play into the legal documents like that's why it matters it doesn't seem like it matters but it matters okay so why are you on the agree it's hard to say legally i mean i've worked in a hospital and they really put an emphasis on dei and that means using the exact pronouns and the genders that the patients associate themselves with and this way they get the treatment that they seek out of a hospital or a medical institution but what happens when it's a man going into a gynecologist or an obstetrician complaining about period cramps just because an individual identifies as a particular way does not mean that biology and anatomy changes patients feel comfortable um what if the what if the treatment they seek isn't the treatment they need could you provide an example yeah so i'm thinking of um a friend of mine is a physician and he yeah. and uh, she had a patient come in uh, who appeared uh, as a male, and she th thought she was a male, mm -hmm. 
but she had a yeast infection. And, and, and the, the, um, there's a story in the news about a, a person who came in who was a, I looked exactly like a male, self-identifies as male, fill, f fills out male, but the person was pregnant and it never came up because they self-identified as male. I think it's equally important to disclose medically what is happening, um, but it is up to the patients to refuse treatment, to decide that they don't want to go through with whatever the doctor is recommending. No, for sure, for sure. Uh, the question is, should they legally should trans women legally be treated as women? Can you think of any examples where trans women should not legally be treated as women? I have not thought about this. Um, and this is why you are here. I mean, I've talked about this with people in sports. I suppose I can see the validity of having an unequal or an unfair advantage because of biological, like at birth. They so you're, you're buying this, the sports thing. Yeah, I can see the validity in that. Are you, are, you, um, are you buying the prisons thing? That people who self-identify as women who have penises should not be in female prisons? I think at the end of the day, it's their decision. And if they choose, they voluntarily choose to change genders in prison, then that is okay. Why wouldn't any man just volunteer and choose to identify as a woman if he's getting sentenced? I mean, like, can, can I actually choose that beforehand as well, since women seem to get lighter prison sentences for the exact same crime? Can I go ahead and identify it there so that it can be a benefit to me? Why are we allowing this? Like, I, I just don't understand the rationale. <laughs> I really don't. But what if they haven't had bottom surgery and are still intact and they self-describe as a woman? Should they be legally treated as a woman and put to a woman's prison? Yes, I think so. Are you concerned? Do you see any potential problems with that? Yes, I do. But even so, even without this, there are currently lots of prob problems with the legal reform system. So, so okay. So I'm coming back to you because I'm, I'm still processing that. Professor, me too. Me too. I, I've been trying to process this for as long as I can remember at this point. Like, why? Why did we make it so complicated? Yeah. Trans women should be legally treated as women. Tell me why you're strongly disagree. Because I'm a molecular geneticist. Well, I'm not even sure. <laughs> Everybody else is clapping. Okay, so tell me, tell me what that because I'm not a. I know I count on my fingers. I know nothing about genes. Being male or being female is a developmental process. You can't go backwards. Okay. So you can't change your sex. Like you cannot do that. And the truth is that currently in California prisons and prisons in other parts of the country, women are getting impregnated by other women. And there's just no way that I mean, this is against the UN. You cannot house female prisoners with male prisoners because they get raped. And that's happening today. And it's not in the news. It's not in the common news, okay. but I know about it. So, so that's the argument for, so you I just want to make sure I'm clear about this. So your argument is because you have domain specific expertise as a molecular geneticist. And then the legal component of that is you're grounding that in your experience of what a man is and what a woman is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just, this bothers me so much. Well, that's why we're talking about it. I, yeah, I know. I just, my heart pounds and I just, you know, I go to the women's, I go to the women's changing room at my gym and there's a dude in there. He's putting on makeup and hoop earrings. And this is not something a woman does when she goes to work out. Kind of sounds like she's talking about our friend Dylan, doesn't it? When Dylan was putting on high heels and makeup and hoop earrings to go hiking, sounds like a caricature of women. And that's what women are having to deal with and face with and encounter in their everyday lives. This was in 2022 that she was so passionately expressing her disagreement with why men and women are different and why we should be treated differently not only within sports but also in the legal realm and i don't understand again why this is an argument but the left has made this an argument so we have to continue to have these conversations so uh so that's the behavior is not common in women's rooms no, nor do women beat each other to death but men do you know and it's just it's so sad that women have internalized misogyny to the point where the man's comfort is takes precedence over the woman's safety let's unpack that allowing men and allowing trans women into women's spaces is internalized misogyny because once again we are allowing their comfort to override our own 
safety. How does that not make sense? It's like, that's why I always say it's like when you are progressing so much that you're really regressing. We've worked so hard to define what women's spaces are, to define what women's sports is. But now whenever you're opening the doors and there's no limitation as far as what is a woman and who can become a woman, now you're allowing the same men that we're carving a space out from to be back in. Remember how we always say that men can't be involved in the conversations with what a woman does with her body? Does the opinion of trans women matter when we talk about women's rights? Where do we draw the line? At what point can we start prioritizing women in women's spaces anymore? Like we're not even allowed to use the word woman. They want to coin cis woman. They don't even want us to exclude them from the fact that they are not biologically women. There's a reason why they don't want to be in men prisons, because men beat each other to death. Women don't do that. Were you convinced by anything she said about putting men in women's prisons? I have a rebuttal. Please. Um, with all respect to, because I'm an aspiring molecular geneticist, um, I want to say that your argument is really geared towards men identifying as women. But what about the other way around? Women identifying as men. So you're asking her if she, I want to make sure I got this right. So you're asking her if she has a problem with women going into men's prisons. When we focus on trans women in women's spaces, it's because trans women are the one that are erasing women's accomplishments. They're the one putting women in harm's way. When a trans man enters into a prison, the other inmates are not likely to get raped by this trans man. The other inmates' safety are not put at risk because you have a trans man in the cell. When trans men enter into sports and compete with biological men, they are not blowing records. They are not setting world records. They're not. They're not the ones winning the championships. So again, it matters, but it doesn't matter as much because men are not negatively impacted when trans men are involved in the community. If anything, men have less rights. As a trans man, you're actually probably going to start understanding what, like, what are some of the actual sexual disparity and sexist that happens in the world. Or men's changing rooms, um, going to gyms. And doing... Women cannot force a pregnancy on a man. You buying that? You are? Okay, so... What would, you, what would it take you to move from agree to slightly agree? Like what argument would you have to hear? What piece of evidence would you have to hear to move one line over? I mean, I want to know specifically why legally it matters. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I consider myself like pretty open-minded when it comes to these things, so I guess I would move over slightly agree. I, I just personally feel like in my heart that it doesn't matter legally who someone or what gender someone is. Is it better to make that decision in your heart or in your head? Is it better to make that decision okay, on the basis of the way you feel or on the basis of argument? Um, but I think having empathy for other people is also important. And there are reasons to have empathy. Yes. And the, do the reasons to have empathy, because you can have empathy about the wrong things, right? Yeah. So we need to make sure that our reasons track our emotions in the right way, right? Mm -hmm. So what would it take you to move to the slightly agree? A really good case study. A really good, solid. That says what? Um, that says legally it's black and white. And I... What's the it in that sentence? What? Um, are transgender women actually legally women, that it has to be one way or the other. But that, would, that wouldn't be a case study, that would be an opinion piece. Well, an example showing that that must be true, that women, transgender women have to be considered males. Or but that would just be a legal opinion though, as opposed to a case study. Oh, you mean like, a, like if you got a bunch of judges and lawyers who agreed? I guess just, yeah, I suppose. But couldn't they agree just because they've 
bought into a dominant cultural value as opposed to something that's true? This might be offensive. Impossible. Um, You're talking to me. How do you know that this, like the other side, isn't based on cultural norms and based on us? Oh, it is. Of it totally is. Yeah. Uh, but I would say the answer to that question is who's willing to revise their beliefs? And I think it's a person by person basis. On the basis of what? Reason, evidence, or emotion, or some combination thereof? Some combination. Okay. So you would, ha you, you'd be willing to move to the slightly agree if you heard a case study of judges and lawyers, you'd be willing to move. But absent that, you're not going to move? For now, yeah. Okay. Is anything anybody has said? moved you to strongly disagree or to slightly disagree or are you still going to be on your line it's 100 percent fine if you are but i'm pretty good here are you you confident that this is the right line <laughs> sure i mean like i said there's uh these pretty clear cases where the distinction really matters uh. and and then there's these other situations where uh i could I think most people, it doesn't bother, it doesn't hurt anybody. Right. So that's, okay. Yeah. So that's why you're on the disagree. Yeah. What evidence would it take for you, just one piece, and I don't want to spend too much time on this question, but what evidence would, you t would it take for you to go to one step to the right or one step to the left? What would you have to know that you don't know now? Uh, that, that someone would get hurt if someone's driver's license, for example, was, was changed. If that, there's evidence that there's harm would come of that, I would move to... But you already gave, oh, just and you already gave two examples, like Fallon Fox and MMA, or right. Leah Thomas those, and those, swimming. Those are, those are reasons why I'm happy to be here. Now, now if, if changing your driver's license also caused harm, I would move to strongly disagree. So if there's okay, more, that's okay, yeah, got it. That okay, that, yeah. that, that, okay, I got it. Okay, what would cause you, what, if anything, would cause you to move to the disagree? And is there anything you heard here tonight that would convince you to move one line over? It's okay to say no, I'm just trying to figure this out. No, I have figured it out. And you're confident? I am as confident as I am that this is my hand in front of my face instead of yours. There is absolutely, this is the most insane thing that has ever happened to me in my life, that women are a feeling now. And that, you know, as, as for the driver's license thing, if a man is, who has tra transitioned has F on his driver's license, and then he gets arrested. They're going to put him in a cell Correct. with women. Correct. And his hands are stronger, his body is stronger, and he can beat that woman to death. So what you're saying is, is a good case for why we should maybe have a category that specifically says trans woman, not just female suddenly, right? So, so the designation is, you know, this person is, is not male anymore. Male anymore. They don't, you know, they've whatever lost their parts and have done hormones and transitioned as far as they could. Right. And, but they're still not male fully, uh, or, you know, you mean, they're still not a woman uh, that are trans women. It's like a separate category. Okay. And, so, and, and then, so, so I'm glad that he did move over to the strongly disagree side. However, I do want to mention that I understand that there are some nuances. For example, when Nikita Dragon ended up going to prison. If you guys aren't aware, Nikita Dragon is a YouTube influencer and she does makeup. However, she is a trans woman. She is a small statured Filipino woman. So I do think if they for some reason went to prison, then yes, there should be a separate category. The issue is a lot of trans women believe that if you separate women and distinguish them from trans women, then no, you are no longer accepting that trans women are real women. I think that's the issue that we're having when we're speaking to the trans community. It's how far is too far. Like, how are we going to separate the the cultural aspect as well as the legal aspect? But they want us to be full accepting in all capacity. And I think that's the issue. We don't have any more common ground. We don't have middle ground. We don't have it so that, hey, live your life, do you, but keep it out of the school. No, we want to be a part of the school as well. We want to have story time with drag queens. We want to be able to be on Blue's Clues and Coco Melon. There is no boundary for the people within the LGBT, specifically T community. There is always this danger where men could beat up women. And even as a woman myself, I could easily be walking down the street and get, you know, assaulted or attacked, right? And just because something changes and it's not what we're used to, 
you could easily see the negatives. For instance, women going to school at UC Berkeley, right? That wasn't always a thing. And in fact, in the physics building here, um, the women's bathroom isn't even adjacent to the classroom because previously they weren't allowed to go here. You could easily make an argument that when women started coming to school and getting higher education, that men couldn't, wouldn't have been accepting of them and could have attacked them easily, but that shouldn't be a reason as to stop them from achieving higher education or... Okay, all right. So I wanted to include that last clip because I think this is the issue with a lot of people that are progressive or that are on the left. The thing is, is that I actually think that she means no harm by this. She wants to be accepting and inclusive of all communities. She wants to be sympathetic and empathetic for all of their wants and needs. And I think that is the issue that we see a lot with the left side. They appeal to the emotions. That's why you see most women lean left. It's because they pull at the heartstrings. That's what the progressives do, despite the logic and rationale as to why we have boundaries, as to why there are laws and policies in place to keep men and women separate. And that's the sad part of it. It's that a lot of us are too scared to push back because we don't want to be on the wrong side of history. A lot of people will bring up the history of the United States and how, you know, we had things segregated. Oh, do we still want to be segregated and keep trans women out of women's sports? This is going back to the Jim Crow days, they'll say. Oh, we're separating people by their race, by their gender, by this, by that. They're trying to create more chaos and confusion. So no, there's a time and a place where we can be inclusive of all people, where we should be basing our judgment on merit. For example, in schools, a lot of these areas, we should be focusing on the merit. And then there are other places where we should focus on some of the biological differences. There's a reason why women's sports was created. If not, we would have just had sports. And then women can just be in the stands and cheer on the men. Because if it was men and women within the same division, there would be no way that women would win. And we know this. So anyways, this video is getting long. I just thought it would be interesting to hear some of their perspective. And I think it's interesting, especially because they're having a conversation about it. And we did see some change and movement with their thought process. But you guys let me know if it's changed your minds any. I'll talk with you guys again next time. Bye.